Hi, my name is Darren Joseph from HCG.tax, and we're a team of cross-border tax professionals that seek to demystify the sometimes confusing world of uh, international tax and compliance. Today, I want to talk about moving abroad, so moving outbound, let's say, from the United States. Generally speaking, we have two types of clients that, that, that are outbound from the U.S. that will come to, to work with us. They're those that are expats. So they have a, they're taking up an assignment in another jurisdiction to work with either the same company or, or perhaps a U.S. company or a, a foreign company that needs a skill set. So for example, for me personally, my personal story is that. So I moved to Singapore in October 2013, uh, to work with a company outside, out in, in Singapore. So, so, you know, I guess that's one common scenario. Another scenario is if you're a location independent entrepreneur business owner, so you have a, a revenue stream, you have a source of wealth that is independent of location. You're genuinely independent, location independent. So you can be anywhere. Uh, and you may choose to be outside of the United States. So those are the two categories, the expats and the business owner. So l let's, let's talk about uh, the process of deciding where to go. Obviously, if it is you and expat, you have a choice. You have a job offer. You went where the job offer was. You followed the money, which 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 makes sense, you know. Otherwise, if it is that you're a location independent business owner, you you do have a choice, obviously. And we see them generally falling into one of two categories: those who know precisely where they want to go, and those who don't. I mean, just generally speaking. So here's me again confessing. I get super nervous if someone comes to us and they want to onboard as a client and they don't know where to go. Because it's, you know, sometimes often points to something, you know, else going on in their life, you know, a bit like crisis, whatever. So it becomes an emotional conversation many times. And therefore, there's a high possibility and probability that even if they were to change location, whatever the circumstances inside them, would not have been resolved so they'd be equally dissatisfied with the new location or jurisdiction as they were with the previous one. So, you know, it, it just, it just doesn't make sense. My position is that such decisions shouldn't be made blindly, that you really need to visit locations. You need to visit a place, get a feel for it, walk around, not just as a tourist, but just get a sense for what it'd be like to live there. You know, I tell clients, you know, quite recently, I tell a client very recently, okay, Jump on a plane, take your family because they're super important. So kids are in school, wait until there's a, like a school vacation. You jump on a plane, you go, do not stay in a hotel, do Airbnb. So you, and you go into a regular residential community and, and stay there for a few weeks and see what it feels like. And that, that's, that's, you know, and, you know, get a sense and then come to a decision as, as a family to see whether it's right for you. Moving location or moving homes is stressful no matter what. I mean, you have differences in culture, depending on where you're going, differences in language. Just response times, you know, you, you just want to get stuff done. And sometimes in some places, things work more smoothly, more efficiently. Like, for example, Singapore, generally speaking, things get done way faster, especially when the government is involved, as opposed to, let's say, the US, the UK, or Canada. But conversely, if you're going to like Spain or France, maybe things take a bit longer. So, you know, just, just kind of keep that in mind. Bureaucracy levels, just the modern conveniences, like there's some jurisdictions where the, there's no Amazon next day delivery. For example, Portugal. Amazon really doesn't operate in Portugal for whatever reason. So people order off or from what I can see off or it's Amazon in Spain and try to get stuff delivered into Portugal, but then there's stuff with duties and I don't know, it, it kind of gets messy. In some jurisdictions, Netflix is blocked. So if you're dependent on, you, you enjoy subscription services like Netflix or HBO Max, which I, I think is Play Max or whatever it's called out, some jurisdictions, you won't be able to get it. And even with a VPN, they found ways of, uh, of blocking it. And some, in some jurisdictions, VPNs are actually illegal. So I'm thinking China and, and the United Arab Emirates, you know. So it is a big decision, especially when you're moving from an emerge, uh, from a developed market like the UK, or Canada or the US to an emerging market. Do not underestimate how stressful it can be. So anyway, so as tax advisors, we generally offer two options. One, we offer advisory to those who, these are clients 
you know, we, we deal with gain there, clients who know generally where they want to go. We talk them through pre-immigration tax planning process. We look at their portfolio of investments and we look at the tax consequences that they're moving to that jurisdiction. And we talk them through it all. We prefer to mathematically model it so you can see exactly what will be the impact on your pocket of staying where you are versus moving to wherever you can spend. For those that don't, we do have a way. I mean, we try still to work with them. We still try to work with people in that situation. We walk them through a questionnaire. We've developed with over 100 questions. And based on that, we will narrow it down to two or three jurisdictions that we think will be a right fit for them. We, we talk them through that process and we model the impact of, of them moving to it. So generally speaking, as tax advisors, that, that that's how we do them. So I, I've done talks with business owners, you know, all across. Asia, the UAE, Europe, UK, Caribbean, of course, the United States. And then, you know, so I, I love doing public talks. In fact, in September, we have, uh, I'm doing three talks, one in Singapore uh, on the first Monday in September, and then on the 12th and the 14th, I'm in New York and in Beverly Hills, California. So have a look at HEJ.tax if you're in those neighborhoods and you want to come and check it out. So anyway. We we do we deal with hundreds of clients a year just in terms of tax advisors and tax clients as well, one on one basis as onboarded clients. So if it is that you're a business owner, my advice is pretty simple. And you know, maybe I'm doing myself out of a job, but that's okay. It's important that the customer gets what the customer needs to get, right? You as the client, you get what you need to get. And take some time and travel and see the options firsthand. In the long term, it's cheaper and lead to a, a more sustainable, a more comfortable process for you and your family. So don't just outsource the whole job of figuring out where you, you want to go. Hope that helps. Have a look at our website, at Internet Attacks. We have over 2,000 articles trying to demystify the confusing world of cross-border tax compliance. We have our YouTube channel where we have over a thousand videos. We're there, there, wherever you get your favorite podcast, chances are we are there also. Thank you very much. My name is Darren. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. So if you're a six, seven, or eight-figure investor, entrepreneur, or business owner who needs a tailor-made solution from a qualified team of professionals, we can help you achieve the international lifestyle, the freedom, and even the tax savings you're looking for. Visit us at htj.tax and live that international life.